Since I was a child, I was dreaming about being in space. Now I'm a neuroscientist at the Weizmann Institute, so as you can imagine, I get to stumble upon some interesting people. I was talking with one of the students, and then I saw some sort of a, of a, of, of a badge on his desk, something like, just like this one here. So I asked him, what is it? So he told me, yeah, we are building a spaceship, and it's going to land on, on, land on the moon. Do you want to join? <laughs> I think it took me less than a second to shout yes. And meet our ride here. And by the way, if, if you have a nice name for it, catch me up later for it. And we still don't have a name for it. <laughs> so I have a friend whose motto I borrowed a few years ago. He used to say, if it's impossible, give me a call, I'll do it. SpaceIL is about doing what has been considered to be de facto impossible for the last 40 years, landing on the moon. Only empires like the United States and Russia did it before, and not them, nor any other country, were able to repeat this achievement since. I heard one of the founders describe our situation as about a week ago. He was saying, we are building a nano spaceship, having a nano budget coming from a nano country. <laughs> the spaceship is going to weigh about 100 kilograms. It's smallest ever. Budget up until $30 million. This is a joke in terms of space missions. The Apollo 11, which landed on the moon, cost more than $1.5 billion in today's value. Think about it. The project is incredibly complex. 14 groups have to work together in order to land this ship on the moon. We have propulsion, launch, ground control, navigation, communication, electrical power systems, computers, mechanics, attitude and orbit control, and more. So, what would be the secret ingredient in being third on the moon? Right, we are going to be third on the moon. Space AL has three core elements as the secret ingredients. It's people, it's keeping it simple. We're not going to reinvent the wheel and ingenuity. More than 100 volunteers harness their mental powers into this mission. Brilliant scientists, from students to professors, and brilliant industry people who has designed, built, and put spaceships, not spaceships, satellites, in space. We are all top of the line problem solvers, but none of us had landed a spaceship yet on the moon. And this is what drives us. Each of us has his day job, but at the end of the day, we are all zealous to go work on the spaceship as if the day had not begun yet. Let me give you just a couple of examples. We have Sandy, she works in a high-tech company by day, and in Space AL, she is in charge of the avionic systems. This basically means the computer that will run and handle everything on board. We have Kobe, who works in a company that develops artificial retina for implants. And he is in charge of the cameras and optics on board. And we are going to use these cameras for uh, the navigation and some parts of the landing. And of course, send some uh, nice pictures back home to show everyone that we have made it. The second ingredient is keep it simple. We are short in time and fun. So we are not going to reinvent the wheel. We try to learn as much as we can from previous missions and integrate all that is good from these missions. I, for one, had read almost all of the hundreds of pages of the Apollo mission transcript, including the in-flight communications between the astronauts and ground control. So essentially, everything that we do, we first check if it was done before, and if so, we are going to take it as is or adapt it to our needs. For example, one of the requirements of the mission is to travel for 500 meters on the moon after we land. 
As a rule, we have made to ourselves for simplicity is to keep to the minimum, as much as we can, the number of moving parts on the ship. So, for example, we will not have wheels. How do you go around the moon with no wheels for 500 meters? But hey, we just landed this thing on the ground, right? We have engines, we have fuel, hopefully. Why not lift off, fly a little bit, and then land again? We just did it, so why not do it again? And this is what actually we're going to do. We're going to jump, hope. The last secret ingredient is ingenuity. Because keeping it simple is not enough. Not only are we nano on uh, funds, we are also short in weight budget and power consumptions. For example, did you ever think to yourself, how one navigates in space? How do you get to the moon, which is 400,000 kilometers away? There's no GPS in space, mind you. No GPS, no way to get there. We're going to do it just like the sailors did it, or maybe pirates back then in the Middle Ages, watching the stars. But for that, you need cameras. But hey, we already have cameras in order to complete the Google Lunar X Prize uh, uh, challenges, like uh, taking uh, panoramic pictures on the surface of the moon, or a self-portrait of, of the spaceship and send it back. So why not using the same cameras for the navigation? And while we are at it, we can use these cameras also for the landing uh, part of the, of the mission. And also, did you ever think, for example, how is it that whenever you rotate your smartphone, the display rotates accordingly? We're going to use similar sensors in order to measure the orientation and acceleration of the, of the spaceship. These things weigh only a few grams, and we are going to use it. It's imperative to understand here that we have only one shot, no second chances. If something goes wrong, the entire mission fails. We cannot take it back, fix it, and resend it. So, is this impossible? Yes. Can we do it? Obviously. <laughs> and I invite you to join us. It will be a magnificent ride. Thank you.